welcome to my video on using Google Scholar for academic research. There are several academic search engines that can be used for uh, literature search and for the purpose of what a literature review. Google Scholar is the most popular one. There's also Microsoft Academic and then uh, Semantic Scholar. However, in this video, our focus will be on Google Scholar, but let, let's take a a brief look at the interfaces of the different academic search engine. This is how the Semantic Scholar looks like. This is how Google Scholar look like, looks like, which will be our main uh, focus area. And this is how uh, Microsoft Academic uh, looks like. To visit Google Scholar, you can type in the address uh, bar of your browser, www.scholar.google.com to visit the landing page. Google Scholar is a free academic search engine that can be thought of as an academic version of Google. So what it does is rather than searching all of the index information on the web using normal Google, when we use uh, Google Scholar, it searches the repositories of publishers, universities, and other scholarly websites. So basically, Google Scholar is a smaller subset of the general Google searches one would uh, normally uh, conduct. Now, what is the advantage of using Google Scholar against uh, normal Google search in finding research papers? One advantage of using Google Scholar is that the interface is comforting and familiar to uh, uh, those who already have used Google. And it also helps in speeding up the learning curve of finding scholarly information. And whatever we find on Google Scholar, there are a number of useful differences we can spot if we find the same thing on a normal Google search. For instance, when we use Google Scholar to search for academic content, it gives us the option to copy a formatted citation in different styles, including MLA and the most popular AAP. It also helps us to be able to export bibliographical data in the form of big, uh, true big text, RIS, and we can use reference management software to be able to deal with this bibliographical data. It also provides us links that can let us explore which other works have cited the work we have found. And then it also provides us the links that can let us easily find the full text of the article we have. Uh, let's uh, start off by uh, conducting a basic search using Google Scholar. So I'm going to search for, I'm going to search for e-government development and corruption. So I type in e-government development and corruption. Now, uh, results of about 30,500 has been returned. And if we look at it carefully, you will see that uh, the, the results are displayed in a different way as compared to how normal Google Scholar would have displayed uh, the results. Now, if we look at it very critically, you will realize that the first uh, the first two lines, the first two lines here, this one and that, e-government as an anti-corruption strategy, TB, understand information economics and policy 2009, provides us some critical bibliographic information. These first two lines provide the title of the document, for example, if it's an article, if it's a book chapter or a report, and the second line provides the bibliographical information about the document in an order. So here it provides us the artist's name, the journal in which it was published, the year and the database in which it was published. So for each of the search results that are displayed, you realize that this particular order is indicated. In the second uh, result that is provided, you see the title is clearly indicated, then followed by the artist's name. Here there are three artists and it was published in Government Information Quarterly 2009 and the database is uh, L. Sevier. But in this second uh, search result, you will see that there is a link. Google Scholar provides a link to a full text, either in PDF format, and in some instances, it will provide it in an HTML format. So here, basically, it means that in the second uh, search results, if we click on this particular link, it will take us, if we click on this, it should take us to the source in which we, would, we may be able to download a PDF copy of the, of the document. Let me go back a bit. Now, if I sign into the landing page of Google 
scholar. Now, if I have a Google email account, I can sign into my, my Gmail account. And when I log into Google Scholar, it will give me an option to be able to save some favorite uh, articles to my library. So if uh, we go back to the uh, display on Google Scholar, you realize that this arrow, this uh, star gives us an opportunity to save the article to my library. Now, if you look at the uh, second uh, uh, information that the third line of information that is provided after the bibliographical uh, details you realize that a snippet of uh, detail is provided by uh, google scholar so this is just a preview of the article that uh, google scholar displays i will if i click on the star i'll be able to save this particular uh, article as part of my uh, library as one of my favorites now if i want to copy the citation and go and paste it into word or whatever i can click on this uh, quotation marks and if i click on the quotation marks basically what appears is that the different formats are indicated and i can copy it either directly by just clicking on it twice and highlighting it and then i can copy and take it to uh, word so that if i open Word, i can just paste it if i want it in the ml mla apa chicago or vancouver style i would be able to do just that yeah so i can come to word and paste the copied version in an apa form format so if i'm i have already provided an in-text citation of the uh, paper in whatever review i'm doing i can paste this at the uh, reference section at the end of the of the paper now there's the next one is uh, cited by so in looking at this paper carefully e-government as an anti-corruption strategy the cited by basically shows that 435 people have cited this paper and we can use that to conduct a forward search on uh, the parameters we have defined as part of our search uh, strategy so if i click on cited by 435 it basically will display all the 435 academic papers that have cited e-government as an anti-corruption st strategy now if i click on search within citing articles and they enter a different search criteria say uh, just corruption let me enter corruption then it will bring out results in the 435 papers that have mentioned the issue of uh, corruption okay go back a bit then the next one is related articles if i click on related articles it will display display all other articles that are related to uh, e-government development and corruption which didn't uh, show up directly when I first made the search using my search parameters. Then Google Scholar also provides the, the different versions of the, the paper. So if I click on the all versions, I'll be able to get all the versions of the paper displayed by Google Scholar. There are instances where the first link provided by Google Scholar may not indicate a download link, but if you click on the all versions you may be able to find a download link that can enable you to download the paper free of charge okay okay currently the search results are displayed based on uh, any time so if i wanted to restrict my search results to say a 10 year period or a five year period i could basically come to custom range and then enter the years so if it's for a five year period then i'll enter 2015 15 to 2020 20, and then i can restrict the search by clicking search when i do that the search results that will be displayed will be for years ranging between 2015 and 2016. if the years are displayed at the right hand side i can basically do the selection by clicking on say since 2016 which means four years and then i can also click 20 since 2019 to display uh, search results of articles that are published uh, between 2019 and 2020. I can even go further to show the most recent papers that are published in the year 2020 by clicking on the link since 2020. When I do that, I will get only articles that are published in 2020. And I happen to see one of my papers that is published, that was published uh, earlier this year, indicated. Okay. In using google scholar you have to know that in defining your search parameters 
the search will not be case it's not case sensitive but i can use uh, quotation marks to be able to restrict my search so for instance if i type in the word e-government and corruption and then i put it in quotes and this side to in quotes and then i click on search it means i'm basically telling google scholar to return the exact match of the phrase e-government and corruption and that is what will appear in my search results so this is one way one can use to restrict uh, search results one other ways one can use to restrict search results is to use boolean operators and we'll look at a number of the boolean operators and the uh, boolean operators are basically uh, and or not we can also use truncation or wildcard to be able to to do that so let's try some of them if i'm looking for e-government and corruption i can type in e-government and then i can use the boolean phrase the boolean operator and sorry and corruption and then click on search now when i do this google scholar will return only articles that contain e-government and e and corruption it will return the outcome without it to bring uh, it will uh, bring me results of only articles that contain these two keywords the next boolean operator we can try is all and what all does is it widens the search and it will return articles with at least one keyword select one keyword selected so if i put all here then i will get result you see that the resource has expanded and i'll get results that will contain either e-government or corruption then the search is widened i can also use not I'll also use not as a boolean operator e-government not corruption then what that means is that it will only return articles that contain the keyword e-government and not the keyword corruption that's what will be returned so i can click on that and you see that the search results are also uh, 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 restricted now another quick tip is the use of uh, truncation and truncation basically works like this there are some particular words that uh, uh, come up differently or the word stems it picks up it, it comes in a different way for instance i can have the word motivate i can have the word motivate i can have motivation i can have motivation i can have motivated motivated and different other forms now if i want google scholar to return results which would involve any of this what i will basically do is if you look at these three ways you will see that the first one two three four five six seven letters are the same so basically what i can do is i would put a question mark i uh, sorry an asterisk at the end of the last common uh, letter and then i will not include all the other, the other letters in my search and then i'll Research. So what basically will happen is that when if I get motivated, it will be returned. Motivation will be returned. Motivative will be returned. Then the last one will be I can also use a wildcard. And wildcard is uh, used to pick up different spellings of a word. For instance, we can spell labor this way, or labor can also be spelled this way. So in other to bring out search results that will include labor in English in English. Uh, form or american form i can remove the letter that differentiates labor in english and labor in uh, american spelling by using a question mark and then i will click on search and when i do that it will also bring me seller articles which will contain labor labor spell as l a b u r labor spell as l o b l o l a b o u r now google scholar also contains an advanced search criteria so if i go to the left hand side this bars click on it i can have advanced search and with advanced search i can indicate different kinds of uh, criteria so for instance if i enter any phrase or words here then basically i'm telling google scholar to find give me search results of uh, articles that contains all these words if i put it here if i paste it here it will give me the exact phrase e-government development in africa alternatively if i put it here 
any article that contains at least one of these words should be returned. And if I put it in the, the bottom one, it should return the results that do not contain these words. And I can indicate that Google Scholar should search for articles that contains this phrase in anywhere of the article or any part of the article or only in the title of the article if I click here. Now, if I want to look for, uh, for instance, assuming I want to look for this exact phrase, e-government development, and then I want it to return search results uttered by, say, Ibrahim Osman Adam because I know the other, then I can click and then it will return only results that contain. And you see that it only returns the papers of I.O. Adam because I have specified the author's name. Alternatively, I can also indicate that, I, I can also indicate that the phrase or the, the set parameters I've indicated, Google Scholar should search within a particular journal, say maybe a journal of, uh, the association of information systems and then i can click search and even with that i can indicate which years i want to search, or i can leave, leave the years blank so i can click search and nothing is found now if i go back to advanced search and click in, in, in you realize that in the article in the title of the article was ticked now let's take in anywhere in the article to see if something will be returned from the journal of the association of information systems several three articles has been returned with that particular phrase in that particular journal and these are ways one can use to restrict search criteria this is just a brief overview of how one can use google scholar to retrieve articles to set to support one's uh, literature review process thank you for watching